Hi, everyone. It's great to be here with you. Market Muse is one of my favorite platforms in the Market Muse team and is some of my favorite people in the entire world. So it's a great honor to be presenting to you today. And I really, really look forward to hearing from all of you. Thoughts, questions, please follow up with me. My email address is Eli, Eli Schwartz.co, Eli at productledseo.com. Love to hear your thoughts and questions and keep in touch and have this be the beginning of a conversation. So today what we're going to talk about is building sustainable SEO with product-led SEO. With a real focus on sustainable SEO, and at the end of this presentation, you'll have a, a better sense about what I mean by sustainable and how some of what happens in the SEO world might be unsustainable. So first and foremost, I want to share that I, I recently launched a book that took me two years to write and publish, but really more than a decade to put together the material and the experience that went into this book. The focus of my book is on strategic SEO and how to think about SEO and how to be successful in SEO strategies. And of course, how to be sustainable. There are so many great books out there and great podcasts and blogs and conferences, which go into how you can tactically succeed at SEO. But I want to write the book around strategic SEO, the book that helps you think about how to be successful in SEO, how to plan an effective SEO strategy, who to hire, and how to really build long-term SEO that drives millions to tens of millions to hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars in revenue for a company rather than the SEO that is short-sighted and focuses on hitting keywords and driving clicks and driving more clicks and maybe driving some links. So let's get into it. And please look for my book on anywhere books are sold. Of course, Amazon is the most likely place, but check out my book. Again, the book is a part of starting a conversation. Love to hear your thoughts. My email address is in the back of the book and would so greatly appreciate it if you'd read it and share with me any feedback. So the way most people think of SEO is a little bit focused on tactics and short-sighted. So let's think about what someone might do. So say their business is focused on blue widgets. They sell blue widgets. So they want to do SEO for blue widgets. They want more people to buy, buy their blue widgets from search. So they go and put blue widgets into a keyword research tool and they pull up a bunch of keywords. They take a list of all of the keywords that they find in the keyword tool and they use that as a stem to build out a content to, content roadmap. And of course, that's something that Market Muse allows you to do. Take the keywords you find, throw it in, and just have content briefs that someone's going to write for you. Once the content is written, you'll go hire a link builder, which will go and build backlinks to the content you've written, and that will be your SEO. So once your content is out there, you're gonna sit back, you're gonna wait. We all know it takes some time for SEO to work, so you're gonna sit back and you're gonna wait for that time, and your hope is that the conversions, the clicks, the bonuses, more contracts, whatever it is you look for SEO will continue to roll in. But in my experience of doing SEO and doing exactly this, there was one significant problem. And that is that this doesn't really work. And the reason is what you've done isn't truly unique. Anyone with enough money for a keyword research tool, the ability to write a content brief for Upwork can do the exact same thing that you've done. They can go and take those keywords, they can put into a keyword tool, they can come up with all the content they should write, and that's going to be their SEO strategy. Now, the reality is, is that everyone else can do the exact same thing. So why should your individual content be any better? And in fact, it isn't. There's so much more that goes into search than just throwing content on a wall and hoping to see if something sticks. But the bigger issue with all of this is the KPIs around this SEO strategy are completely wrong. The KPIs around this kind of content strategy and this kind of content-led SEO is, is focused on clicks, maybe rankings, which are even worse, 
but it's not really rolling into a general strategy of growing a business. In this screenshot, this is, you know, I, I work with a few companies that have billions of impressions and hundreds of millions of clicks. These aren't sales. This is a UGC company that drives tons and tons of traffic. Their rankings are even great, but the traffic is absolutely useless. The money they spend on SEO is not of value. So if you aren't focused on the KPIs that will grow a business, then you aren't really focused on the KPIs that make SEO worthwhile. And most importantly from this, everything you've done to date to really grow your SEO, that's really tactical. Those are build content, build keywords, build links. There's no so what attached to it. There's no strategy. If you look at some of the common SEO best practices, most people, you don't even be an SEO expert, know how to do this. They know how to put keywords on a title tag. They know to write copy and follow best practices and how much copy they should write. They know the title should be clickable. They, they certainly know that you want to write a good snippet. Any good ad copywriter knows that you want to write a good snippet. Maybe they don't know about internal linking, but these are basic SEO tactics. They don't roll into a strategy. And my favorite SEO tactic that really does not drill into a strategy is anything related to page speed. So a whole lot of talk about whether they're, page speed update will come out, when it's going to come out and how it's going to impact SEO. From my experience, I have never seen a truly slow page impact visibility. I, I don't disagree that it could exist, but I've never seen it. So fixing the page speed of a page just for SEO is just a tactic and doesn't really roll into a strategy. What I have found is for sites with a high traffic baseline, doing content and technical SEO might give you a 10% lift, if at all. So if your site has been around for a while, if the site has been around you know, a few years and has a certain baseline of traffic, tweaking title tags, adding new content, again, there's scale of how much content you can add is not high. You know, let's say you spend $500 to $1,000 per piece of content. How much is your budget? How big is your budget that you can write significant amounts of content per month? And can you really move the needle? In reality, Again, depends on the space, depends on the vertical, depends on the age and the baseline of, of your traffic. I have not seen that these kind of tactics are really going to move the needle. You know, my, my absolute favorite tactic that some seem to waste time are and, and link buying. So or guest posting. So this is, you know, my typical inbox and I'm, I'm flooded with these kinds of things. You know, back in the day, Google may have penalized websites and now that I don't think they need to penalize websites anymore because they can simply ignore the links. And I, I think what underscores all this and what underscores why tactics might not be the best way to approach SEO and what underscores why page speed and link buying and all the little things folks might do to improve their SEO, why it might not be that effective is to really think about who Google is and what Google is. And I think these three images symbolize it. So on the left side, you have the, in the logo for a Google Assistant. I love my Google Assistant. I, I could talk to Google, can follow up with questions I'm doing. It can really think for itself. My Google Assistant can wait on hold when I call numbers. It can alert me to sales happening for products I might have looked at. So it's, the, it's AI, it's thinking. The same company that produces this AI, which is search driven, to inform me whether I need to wear a jacket or to inform me that the weather is going to change or to inform me that my flight's going to be late. That AI can read content. It can read links. Moving over to the right side, Google Lens. So for those of you with Android phones, I'm sure you have Google Lens on your phone, maybe you haven't used it, but Google Lens is part of the camera. It can read characters, it can read images, it can recognize what objects are. So that's AI. So putting an image alt text on an image isn't necessary today, I don't think at least, when you have Google Lens. And then in the middle is my favorite example of what kind of company Google is, that's Waymo. So Waymo is Google's autonomous driving division. Waymo, as far as we know, has never seriously injured anybody. It trips up, it's a computer, but a company that possesses the kind of AI that can save lives or at least not hurt lives, certainly they can do the basics of when you look at a website and say, well, this doesn't make sense and this, you know, this just looks like it's written for computers or these backlinks aren't relevant. They have AI can do the exact same thing. 
So let's pivot over to a different approach to SEO and what I call product-led SEO and what I, I wrote my entire book about. Product-led SEO focuses on strategy. Does SEO even make sense? Mm -hmm. I think there are many cases where SEO is an absolute waste of time because there's no real user behind it. So once you've determined that there is a user and that there is a benefit to you doing SEO, then we can start talking about the kind of strategies that will drive SEO. And with these kind of strategies and with this kind of effort, you can see 10 times growth. Unlike the 10% growth you might be able to see from content and marketing and title tag optimizations and the little SEO tweaks, Product-led SEO can allow you significantly to scale, to scale your SEO footprint and to see the kind of growth you'd never be able to see otherwise from this channel. The reason I call it product-led SEO, and again, I go so much deeper into this in the book, but one of the primary reasons I call it product-led SEO is because products need strategies. No one ever launches a product and say, well, I think there will be users and I'm when as soon as my engineers are done building it, I'm going to throw it out into the world. And by product, it doesn't necessarily need to be a website. It doesn't need to be a physical product. It can be anything that's tangible that you want users to, to touch and experience. No company launches their core product offering just on a whim. Even more than that, when you're launching a product, and again, this can be whatever it is that you're launching for SEO, you need to be cross-functional. SEO might typically involve just a content writer, but when you're building a product for an SEO user, this is going to be so much more involved because you need images. You need to work with a design team on how those images will look and how the pages will look. You need to maybe, you certainly need to work with engineers. You need to work across the entire company to be effective. Again, not just thinking about how this content should be written and how much of it should be written. You're really thinking, how much, what kind of content do I need to produce? Does it matter for users? Work with your, your support teams to know what kind of content, what kind of products you should be creating. In this world where you're building products, the user matters more than anything. So instead of saying content is king, I think the user is king. If, and everyone in SEO is always gonna say they focus around the user, but they still put aspects of algorithm chasing in there completely ignore the algorithm, focus on the user. If there's no user that's going to be reading your content, if there's no user that's going to be reading your content and eventually buying from that content, don't do it. There's no reason for that. This begins with the user, knowing that there is a user for this, knowing that you're creating for an actual user and creating for demand. When you're doing this and when you're building around what users want, try to think, is there anything programmatic? And by programmatic meaning, do you have to physically write content by creating content briefs? Or can you write content briefs that you can multiply into many, many different pages? And more than that, is it scalable? Is there potential for meeting the needs of millions of different customers with different kinds of content offerings, different kinds of product offerings? Or do you have to physically write out one piece of content for every kind of user? When you're doing this, you first wanna ask the why. Does it matter? Is a user going to convert here? Does a user even need this content? Is a user even going to search for this content? And only then, once you've determined that there is a user and they want this kind of content, only then should you figure out what. How will this content look? How long should it be? What is it you're creating? Is it visual? Is it text? Is it a combination of both? Maybe it's a video. When you're doing this, Instead of looking at metrics and looking at keyword research, we're going to look at people. So that may mean you need to run a survey, an actual survey, or it may mean you just want to survey customers by talking to them in person or on the phone or however you talk to customers. Know that there's demand for what you're creating. If you're in the position where you have customer data, either your customer data or someone else's customer data, that you know that the SEO you're going to be creating meets a need, do that. Build off of that. And my favorite source is, again, if you know that what customers are asking for because they've talked to your customer support teams and hopefully they're putting this data into some sort of data tool like Salesforce or database that tracks their interactions, know what their, their problems are. So you're gonna build around a customer journey. You're gonna build around what customers need rather than looking at the metrics and saying, well, there's a ton of keyword research volume here. So this is what I'm going to create. No, don't do that because if you do that and you're only focusing on what there's keyword research volume for, you're going to miss out 
on the key aspects of the customer journey. You're going to miss out on what a user might have said, oh, I need more information about this. So I'm going to go to another website. I'm going to go to Quora because it answers my questions. I'm going to go to Reddit because it answers my questions. I'm going to go to the competition because it answers my questions. Build around the customer. Don't build around keyword research. And then only once you know this and you know what it is that the user is looking for, only then can you start building the how. Can you know, should it be visual? Should it be a video? How much content should it be? What languages should it be? Should it be mobile friendly or should it not be mobile friendly? Assuming that you're always going to need to be mobile friendly is wrong. There are many customers that will never use a mobile device because the way they're shopping is they're using their desktops, or maybe they're all customers that will only use their mobile device. So everything you build has to be built around mobile. Only once you know the what and who the people are, can you really decide how it is that you're going to build. Because you're building a product, you should use product processes, use product languages. For those of you that are in SEO and for those of you that are content marketers, try to adopt the language of product managers, even if you are a marketer. So understand stack ranking, understand the resources required and why it should be required. Is this something you're doing just for hygiene or is this something you're doing because it actually has high impact and you have confidence that it will be successful? This is an example of the spreadsheet I use. And there, there are many, many different ways of doing this. But again, use product processes rather than just marketing and creating tickets and, and shipping it off and hoping it will work out. When you're selling internally and trying to get teams on board to go and do what it is that you need them to do, use conversions as the metric. Say, I want to build this because this is how many conversions or dollars. This is how much money I'm going to make for this. Don't build off a keyword of research volume. Don't say there's, I, you know, according to Google, there's this amount of searches per month. Multiply that by 10 because I'm accounting for a long tail. Use total addressable market. Say, this is how many people there are that have this specific need. And therefore, I want to build towards that. Again, think about conversion. Think about dollars. Think about the KPI for the business and not clicks and not certainly, certainly not rankings or search volume. When you're forecasting, again, you're going to take the total addressable market and say, there are this many people that have this exact problem. And based on that, I think I can get this amount of the market and it'll be this amount of people that are going to convert and not using there are this amount of people that search for the keyword. And I can get this amount of clicks based on the click curve. You want to think of the bigger number because it's reality. And I know the pushback I've heard in the past is, well, these metrics are fuzzy. Well, if you think so, you may have never been in a product planning meeting where they're using just as fuzzy metrics to come up with the things they're building. They're using estimates and forecasts. You can use those exact same estimates and forecasts. You don't need exact research. If your company does require exact research, use those exact research processes. Don't use keyword research. One of my favorite areas to really dig into and build SEO because we're focused on conversion is brand traffic. Too often SEOs ignore branded traffic because Frankly, it's not sexy to say I, I'm ranking on my brand or I've acquired more traffic by having more brand visibility. But that shouldn't be the case. If your goal is conversions, if your goal is driving more value for the business, brand is the number one place you should do this. If, you are, if people are searching for your brand and they're finding not you, those are con lost conversions. Anywhere there is to opportunity to grow more brand, grow more brand. And here's some examples of places you can grow more brand. So look at search suggest. So throw your brand into any search suggestion tool and make sure you're visible. You don't have to be number one, but just make sure you're visible on all those suggested terms and not your competitors. Look at your Google search console. Look for the terms that people are looking for and not finding you or not finding the best result. Build content for any related terms and anything that you see in the search results. Optimize your click-through rates. So one of the things I've seen is on large products like Amazon, like SurveyMonkey, you put the word official, official Photoshop, because when you put the word official, it gets better click-throughs. Why? I don't know, but go after the better click-throughs. That's some just more traffic that you can be getting. For non-brand, look at government resources. So governments are notable, are terrible at creating content and terrible at doing SEO. Do the SEO for them. Take their content, 
expose it to the world. Most of it's open, you know, it's not licensed and you have free license to do whatever it is that you want with it. Look for PDFs, look for old search results. So you can go and do an advanced query in Google and look for things that are more than 10 years old. You can update that and create better offerings around the content that used to exist and just no one has created more updated content. Go to image search, look for popular images, which you can turn into content. I said this earlier, but look at Reddit and Quora. Facebook forums, anywhere that people are asking questions and there's needs that you can fulfill with your content. Again, fulfilling it programmatically and fulfilling it scalably. And then finally, look at structured data sets. There's Reddit forums for structured data. Google has a structured data, has a data tool, big data tool. So look for data that's available that you can take and merge from one data set into another and create a new product offering. Question you will be asked internally and question I am always asked is how long this will take to really build this? And the answer is as long as it takes to build a product. Rome wasn't built in a day, your product shouldn't built, be built in a day. This is not about producing X amount of pieces of content per week and then ranking on that in the next two weeks. This is about producing a large body of content, a large product and chipping away at a total addressable market. And the longer it takes you to build this, the more defensible and the more runway you have ahead of your competitors when they try to build the exact same thing. I mentioned earlier about link building and I said that there were some ways to build links that I completely don't agree with. Instead of building links by guest posting, in a way anybody can copy it, build links with PR. So I know it's now trendy to say, instead of saying guest posting to do digital PR, Forget that entire concept of digital PR. Think about actual PR, whether it's digital or not. You wanna create things that people want to link to, that wanna talk about you. So work with a PR firm that understands SEO or work with a PR firm and teach them SEO. I work with an amazing PR firm that really understands SEO and they're building PR that actually has links that grows the value of a brand. And even if Google discounts the value of the link that is within the content, it doesn't matter real readers are reading it and you're getting real users that are potentially clicking on that and becoming potential customers. So think about links from a PR standpoint. The tools you'll need to really be successful at this. So you need an insight into revenue and too often SEO teams are not really tied into the actual revenue of, how, of the growth of the company. Tie into that, see if you can get invited to finance meetings, if you're a consultant, understand the impact of the traffic that you're driving. You need a cloud crawling tool because you're going to be building lots and lots of pages. You have to have access to Google Search Console. You need to be creative. I would say that you also need a content tool like Market Muse, of course, because you want to build content briefs that make sense and figure out how to scale those content briefs over and over for all the content you're creating. SEO is about content and don't miss that point. You have to have content in order to be successful in SEO. You just don't need one-off manual blog posts. You wanna create great content and scale it over lots and lots of different users and lots and lots of different needs. And from a link perspective, whether you hire a PR agency or you do it yourself, think about it from a biz dev standpoint of like, how do you reach out? How do you build those relationships? And just to wrap up, content doesn't scale. So if you're just writing blog posts, Think about each blog post costing you $500 to $1,000. The end of the year, you probably won't have that many more blog posts. If you want to get to the point where you have tens of thousands of pieces of content, just think about how much that's going to cost you. When you think about SEO from a product-led standpoint, it's focused on driving traffic, but focused on driving revenue because we're building the product offering, we're building the content offering for where there are going to be potential users and potential buyers. When you're building your SEO, don't just focus on content and keywords. You want to focus on the entire experience. How does it link to other parts of the product? How does it conversion optimize to actually drive value for the user? What does that page look like? Does it answer the questions the user has? Does it have the right visual imagery? Does it have the right video? Does it have bullet points? Whatever it is that you need, you're focused on the user. Of course, the user is king. No matter what, if there is no user here, then you're just building content for content's sake, focus on the user. And finally, there is really no one size fits all. I can't give you the playbook for how product-led SEO should be for your business because that's replicable. That's what everyone is doing when it comes to content. They're going to keyword research tools and they're copying what their competitors are doing. Don't copy what your competitors are doing. Do something unique and creative 
that is only perfect just for you. And with that, greatly appreciate your time. Sign up for my mailing list. Check out my website. And of course, please look at my book and keep in touch. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here and I look forward to hearing from all of you.